Ah, yes, the PlayStation 5 user interface. The user experience, if you will. I feel like lately I've talked a lot about it, covering the activity card system and how it's very inconsistent, or the welcome changes Sony has been making to things like the revamped Explore icon. But today I'd like to speak more broadly about the UI overall, because when it comes to using this on a near daily basis, it's becoming something of a love-hate relationship. Now, if I'm being honest, those are both two extremes that might not exactly fit the points I'd like to get across, because I don't necessarily love or hate the UI completely, but it's a tug-of-war thing. The things I dislike are keeping me from loving it, and the things I like are keeping me from hating it. So really, on day one of PlayStation 5, I was always a fan of the user interface, as in the core values and design language, because as we often see with products that have a dramatic shift in software, you almost always lose features that you had from the outgoing product. And that's for a number of reasons, like sometimes there's features that are simply outdated, like PlayStation 3 supporting printers. Wait, what? Or how media files cannot be stored directly on console storage like PS3. I don't care what year it is, I'll always complain about not having this anymore, PS4 never let you do this, and we all know Sony isn't going to bother with that on PS5 either. I don't want another drive sticking out of my console in purgatory, let me save my files. Anyway, the point is, things do change, so some features don't come back, but usually you will see over-the-air updates come over time that will gradually restore features that weren't ready on day one, and of course new fancy things that your old product, in this case PS4, never did. So besides the fact that PS5 was in many ways lacking in features on day one that PS4 could do, it was more a matter of loving the basic design principles that Sony went with on PS5. Firmware updates are of course coming later, so just knowing it looks like this off the jump, I felt good about it. And if you haven't noticed, I was a big fan of the cross media bar on PS3, and just to briefly explain why, I felt it offered fast navigation that never felt like it had to whisk you away to a different menu. Button presses were at an absolute minimum too. Photos, videos, music, games, they're all next to each other, and the second you move into these menus, your content appears right away vertically. Foldering up isn't a problem either because when you select these files, it keeps you in the moment, as in you can clearly see you haven't left the XMB. This carries all the way to settings as well, and there's very few things on this UI that have to take you to an entirely different screen. Nowadays, most UIs navigate you away from that main menu whenever you're trying to do something, and that's not to say it's a massive drawback, there's very real reasons why software is built around these ideas, but it's just something I always appreciated and valued with the cross media bar. Now, getting back to PS5, it does have some of that going on when it comes to different menus, for example the game library, or settings, these are entirely separate screens, but if we're looking just plainly at the home screen, this is what I like. My games. Front and center and each one also dominates the screen with a promo graphic when you're sitting directly on their icons. Sometimes developers will even supply a track from the game that will play when you're looking at them. Quite honestly, this alone is what I really like. It's reminiscent of how the PS3 did this, when you're even so much as looking at something, you'll see the game take over your entire screen with an image, track, and sometimes even a looping video for that game application. Now, these were all things developers could do, but a lot of them didn't, most would simply do a picture with no audio. Or a smaller picture with no audio. But the best ones? They used all three. And whenever I got a new game, I would always get excited to see just what the game does on the XMP. Imagine my disappointment when I got a new game and the developer said, just ship it, and the game does literally nothing. Woo, Frogger. The interesting thing is, this was still around on PS4, though at this point Sony did drop the option of having a looping video play, but the problem on PS4 is that in order to see the background image or track, you had to scroll down into the game's page, and for the entire generation, that basically killed it. Ask yourself how many times you did this. There's just not many reasons to enter this menu. Sometimes quickly accessing DLC for that game was easier, but it's not like you're doing that all the time, unless you made it a habit to go down there and like the game, which was pointless. So more or less, this felt missing from PS4. 
And that's where there's a fork in the road here. A lot of people want custom themes to come back to PS5, and hey, I don't blame them. It's a way to change things up, maybe appreciating your favorite game, or just being able to put your own personality into something you use every day. Now, personally, I don't care to do that, but it's interesting to note because the key difference with how PS5 handles this versus PS3 is that, well, on PS3, there's a default look. It's those beautiful XMB waves that get me jazzed up at night. But if you don't want those, a theme is great because there's so much screen real estate to use. PS4 is much the same since you're not really using game pages and nothing else changes around most of the console. PS5 doesn't really have a default look. There's very few places on the console where you see that amber bronze glowing like animation. The default look is your games more often than not. To add themes means you're overriding the entire PS5 design language. And so I don't think that's a bad thing and hopefully Sony does eventually add themes back for those that want them. But it wouldn't surprise me if they pull a Nintendo here, where there's no way to really change up the home screen throughout the entire generation. Either way, I really value the fact that my content takes priority, and each game gets to showcase its personality without throwing in too much unnecessary visual noise or text. I'm looking at UPS4 game pages, there's just way too much going on there. Sometimes, less is more. So then what about the things this UI is apparently doing wrong? Well, it's just inconsistent. Case in point, the card system, which I won't get into too much detail on again. I've already talked about that at length in a different video, which I'll link below if you're interested. But Sony recently changed cards so that they're tied more directly to the game's hub. Not only is there now a link to use a card right away, but once you've started playing something, your background image may change. That will depend on the most relevant card for your progress in that game, and if the developer supplied an image for that card. If they did, that's what will appear on the home screen now, instead of the default promo image. In practice, this is actually pretty cool. Now there's a dynamic at play where a relevant screenshot shows you your progress or what you were doing last. Except, this has often led to weird situations that don't really make sense. For example, God of War Ragnarok has cards for a variety of things in the game, and you would think that whatever I'm doing is the card that will be used, but no, the whole time it's been the Eyes of Odin, which is the collectible for the entire game. I mean, sure, I guess I'm working on this, but why hasn't any main quest cards, or side quests for that matter, been used here instead? It just seems a bit odd that over a 30-50 hour playthrough, the home screen has been on my case about getting those ravens done. Now, if there's one thing that throws a lot of people off, it's this little guy right here. These three dots. This is unlabeled, obviously, but a lot of people overlook how important this thing is. You select it to see more options, often crucial ones, when it comes to different versions of a game. Now, if you use this on your own games, you'll simply see it offers the option to see the product page for that game, but it's the product pages where it's useful. You'll see digital deluxe versions, bonus content, game upgrades, demos, these can all be hidden in this menu. And that's frustrating to anyone who doesn't know that's where they are. Especially when PSN often lets you search for these things directly, you might find that demo you're looking for, or a direct link to the digital deluxe version, but if you can't, it's probably in the dot 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 menu. It's just one of those things where I'm used to it, I get how it works and I don't have any major problems, but I do sympathize with anyone who complains about this UI, because you've got these obtuse menu decisions, and sometimes you might even get hit with whatever this is. Actually, Uncharted is another good example. When Sony launched the Legacy of Thieves collection, they altered the background image for the PS4 versions of these games to show the Legacy of Thieves collection, which is not correct. This should only be displayed when you've got the collection, and I can see how someone might look at this, overlook the PS4 label, and not realize this isn't the updated version. There is the $10 fee to upgrade from PS4, but the Legacy of Thieves collection really did make the store listing for both of these games really screwy. Maybe I'm a stickler for these kind of things, but I like consistency. There's just so many examples of this across PS5's UI where there's bloated menus, product listings with weird options, the game hub thing that we talked about, and also, whose bright idea was this? We went through three PlayStation systems that had 16x9 trophy icons. Three generations, then someone just had to say, let's make PS5's icons one by one. Why? 
Another point of contention is that this UI does tend to feel a bit more lonely, as in it isolates you more from your friends. Perhaps this is primarily due to PS4's What's New section being gone, which was a simple way to at least get a bird's eye view of what your friends have been playing. You know, it's funny because you look at that list of items and you think about how it's mostly filled with things that you probably have no interest in. If they're playing something you don't have, it's not like you can understand much from the trophies they're earning, but the sheer fact that it's there just adds a social touch to the experience that PS5 currently doesn't have. There was one good recent change though. Here in the US where we have the Explore icon, they updated it to include a breakdown of your trophies, but also a small widget showing you how many friends are online. It's such a tiny but welcome change that without realizing it, does add a bit of life to the experience. I hope they expand on this page and make it more widely available and usable, perhaps offering a slew of widgets that the user can customize, from things as simple as weather to more social features like your last group message. Give this space the social air of the PS4's What's New timeline, but give it more usable features that people actually care about. I could probably go on with more examples, but I think the point has been made. There's a bunch of things that aren't exactly deal breakers, at least not to me anyway, but they do enough to keep the UI from being something truly great. For now though, I'm still pleased with fundamentally what they went with on this console, and I can safely say that PS4's UI was serviceable and inoffensive, but here, it feels like my content plays a bigger role, and that's what I really like the most. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.